Shall be our stage, this Hawthorne break shall be our tiring house, and we shall do it in action as we shall do it before the Duke. Peter Quince. Uh, what sayest thou, Willie Bottom? There are things in this com comedy of Pyramus and Tisby that will never please. The um, first, <clears throat> Peter Quince. Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? A rack, a perilous fear. I believe we must leave the killer now. Uh, we're all nay, not a whit. I have a device to make all with. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say that we will do no harm indeed with our swords. And for a more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver, and that will put them out of fear. Hmm. Well, we shall have such a prologue, and it shall be written in eight and six. No, uh, make it two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. Will the ladies be afeard of the line? I fear, I promise you. Uh, masters, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring in God's shield as a line among ladies is a most dreadful thing, for is there is not a more fearful wildfowl than your line living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prophecy writ to tell he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck, and he must speak through that saying, or to the same defect. Ladies, or fair ladies, I would wish you, or I would request you, or I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, my love for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion to this place for pity of my life, no, I am a man as other men are. And there indeed let him name his name and tell them plainly he's not to join her. This will put them out of fear. Well, it shall be so. But then there are two hard things. First, to bring moonlight into the great <coughs> chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe did meet by moonlight. Let the moon shine that night we play our play. A calendar. Look at the woman, like, look at the woman, like, find out moonshine, find out moonshine. It both shine that night. <laughs> Why, uh, then may you leave a casement on the great chamber where we play our play open and the moon may shine in through the window. Aye. Or else, one must enter with a lanthorn and a bush of thorns and say he comes to present or to disfigure the person of Moonshine! <laughs> but then there is one more thing. To bring a wall into the great chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe, says the story, did uh, talk through the chink of a wall. Oh, you can never bring in a wall. Mm. Well, what say to you, Bottom? Some man or other must present wall, and let him have some plaster or some <laughs> loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall. And let him hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny may Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. <laughs> well, if it be so, then all is well. Come, masters, every mother's son, and rehearse your part. Uh, Pyramus, you begin. When you have finished, enter into that break, and so every man according to his cue. What hempen homespun shall we swaggering here so near the cradle of the fairy queen? <laughs> what? A play tour? Tell me an author. <laughs> an actor too, if I be called. Pyramus, speak. Tis me, stand forth. <laughs> Dear, 
But up a voice. Stay thou but in a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. Stranger peer, Miss Manair played here. Must I speak now? <laughs> Why, yes, you must. For you must understand that he goes but to see a noise that he has heard, and is to come again. Most radiant pyramus. Most radiant. <laughs> most radiant pyramus. Most lily white of hue. Of color like the red rose on triumphant prayer. Most frisky juvenile. I meet most lovely Jew. As true as true as far as the gift would never tire. I'll meet thee, pyramus, at Minnie's tomb. Ninus tomb, man. Ninus. Why that you must not say yet? That you answer to pyramus. Oh, you speak all your part at once, cues and all. <laughs> Pyramus, enter, your cue is past, it is never tire. As true as true as horse that yet would never tire. If I the fair tis me, I would only lie. <laughs> Monstrous! Oh, most strange, we are haunted. Brave masters, fly! <laughs> And neigh and bark and grunt and roar and burn. A horse, hound, hog, bear, fire at every turn. Oh, they run away. This is, this is a knavery of them to make me afeard. Oh, a bottom, thou art changed. What do I see in me? What is she? Is she an asset of your own, do you? Make an ass of me if they could. <laughs> to frighten me. <laughs> but I will not stir from this place, do what they will. I will walk up and down here and I will I will sing, and they shall hear that I am not afraid. The also cocks of black of you with orange tawny bill, the bosso with his note so true, the red with little quill. The pinch the sparrow and the lark, the plain song cuckoo breath, whose don't full many a man doth mark, and dares not answer. <laughs> well, indeed, who would set his wit to so foolish a bird? <laughs> who would give the bird a lie, though he cried cuckoo? Never so. <laughs> I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much loud of thy note, so is my eye of ball to thy shape. And thy fair virtue's force perforce doth move me, on the first view to say and to swear, I love thee. <laughs> <laughs> Methinks, mistress, uh, you should have little company for that poor, methinks that the reason and love keep little company together nowadays, uh, the more pity some honest neighbours will not, will not make them friends. Nay, I can gleek upon occasion. <laughs> Oh, not so good either. But if I have wit enough to get me out of this wood, I have enough to serve mine own turn. Oh, out of this wood do not desire to go, and thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate, and the sun must still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore go with me. I have fairies who will attend on thee, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing while thou on present flowers dost sleep. And I will purge thy mortal grossness so, that thou, like an airy spirit, you shall go. If he is blossom, cobweb, moth and mustard seed, Betty, and I, and I, and I, where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman, 
Not to the mouths and do courtesies. Hail, Lord. Hail. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, I cry your worship's mercy heartily. I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb. For Master Cobweb, I shall desire you of more acquaintance. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you, good monsieur. Your name, honest gentleman? Peace Blossom. Good Master Peace Blossom, commend me to Mistress Squash, your mother. And to Master Peace, called your father, I shall desire you of more acquaintance, good Master Peace Blossom. Your name, honest gentleman? Good Master Mustard Seed, I know your patience well. That same cowardly giant like Oxbeef hath devoured many a gentleman of your house. Believe me, good Monsieur, your kindred hath made mine eyes watery now. I shall desire you more acquaintance, good Monsieur. Come, lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity. Tie up my lover's tongue and bring him silently. Thank you.